color, number, string, and boolean. Let's use these four types of variables to prototype in Figma. As usual, there is a link in the description for a Figma file if you want to follow along. Let's jump in. Did you notice my shirt says Figma? Merchandise. <laughs> In the file, you have these four frames and we're going to be using them to do different prototyping on different types of variables. Let's start with color. Let's prototype this screen so that every time you click on a different color, the heart changes to that color. It's going to be so simple. Blink and you'll miss it. The first thing we have to do, you guessed it, is create a color variable. To create a variable, make sure you're selecting nothing on your canvas. So just click on the canvas to make sure. Then in local variables, create variable color. And we're going to call it heart color. The value, don't make it white because then you won't see the heart before you select a different color. I'm just going to go with D9, 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 which is the kind of default gray. Now let's assign it. So I select my heart, go into my four squares and assign it to my variable that I just created. So easy. Now let's prototype. I'm going to shift E to go into my prototyping panel, select my first block, add an interaction, on click, set variable heart color two and then i'll just select the red color from my selection colors and that's it it's so simple right now we don't have an option to like create a color variable and then tell it to change one variable to a different variable for some reason hopefully that will come in a future release so let's just keep doing that on the green one add an interaction set variable and then heart color two green then i'll do the same with the purple add an interaction set variable heart color to purple and that's it told you so fast we select our frame shift and space to open our prototyping preview then if i click on it ha 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 see so good i promise the next ones are going to be a bit more advanced moving on to number so in the number frame we have a tiny little dinosaur and he needs to get his pizza guys it's really important so in order to get him to move to the pizza, we are going to use these plus and minus to add this number and that number is going to control him moving. It's also going to control this bar moving. I know so much. So let's see this in action. To start off, let's, you guessed it, create a variable. And again, we're only going to need one variable to control all of this. Go into local variables, create a new number variable and I'll call it count. Leave the value at zero. Now let's assign this variable. I'll select the text box where the number 10 is right now. And then in order to assign a text variable, this has moved in the new UI. It's now here at the top. You see that there's the apply variable button and I'm applying count. So now it's gonna change to zero. This variable is gonna need to be assigned to a few more things in our design. And one of those is this green bar. I want the green bar to grow and grow like a progress bar as long as I keep clicking on the plus button. So in order to do that, its width needs to also be tied to that same variable. So I'll go into width. Then if I hover over it, there is that little, that little diamondy shape that we know. I click on it, apply count. It's gonna disappear because now it's zero, but trust me, it's still there. Everything's fine. One more thing needs to be attached to it. In order to move the dinosaur, the thing that would make the most sense is to kind of connect it to the X, but right now the X and Y position cannot be controlled by variables, maybe in a future state, but right now we can't do that. So we need to hack it a little bit. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna put my little dinosaur into an auto layout. So I've selected my dinosaur and then shift A to put him into an auto layout. Don't worry if you don't know how to use auto layouts too much, this is going to be really simple. The first thing I have to do is zero out all of these properties. So the gap is going to be zero, the padding here, the padding here, everything's zero. And then make sure that you see the word hug over here where the width is. If you don't see it, click on the drop down and select hug. Now I'm going to want to control the left padding to push the dinosaur towards the pizza. In here, Next to the padding section, I've got individual padding. So if I select that, it will open up that option. And I'm gonna change the left padding. And you see if I just change it now, you see how he's moving towards the pizza. So let's assign our variable to here once again. So apply variable, count. I'm gonna move him a bit further down so he is in line with the pizza. Perfect. Let's prototype the plus and the minus to control this count variable. Okay, click on the plus, go into prototype, just like before. On click, the action is set variable count to. Now, what I'm setting it to is count plus 
however much I want because we don't want to reset the variable every time. If I just set it now to 10, let's say, then next time I click on it, it's just going to be 10 again. So I need to set it to count plus and then whatever number I want. I think let's go with 10 because one can be a bit too small. So let's go with 10. Let's see this work. Click on my frame, shift and space to open the prototyping preview. Let's click. Look at him move. Look at him. Look at the bar grow. The dinosaur's moving. And also, I put some text in white on top that you couldn't have seen before. And then, voila! He got there. Yay! So that is amazing. Let's make the minus work. And then we're going to tweak this even more. So let's do the minus. It's exactly the same thing. We're going to say interaction on click set variable count to count minus 10. Let's just see that in action. So plus, 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 minus, 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 minus. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. Now, I don't know why necessarily we'd need the minus, but it's good to know that that exists. Um, and now let's see, he gets to the pizza at around 250. So as we saw, 250 is the magic number. So what we're going to do is on the prototype of this plus, we're going to tell it to stop once it reaches 250. So we can add another interaction on the same trigger, meaning every time that trigger happens, every time the click happens, multiple actions can occur. So let's add another action and that's going to be a conditional. And once you do that, once you have more than one action, you get this really nice new menu in prototyping, which just keeps all the actions on the left. And then if you click on them, you get more information on the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to only add those 10 onto count if count is smaller than 250. If it's bigger than 250, we don't want it to do it. So let's set the condition. So if count is less than or equal to 250, then it's gonna perform this action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab it and drag it in. So you see now on click, it will go through this question. It will ask itself, is count bigger? Is count smaller than 250? If it is, it will run this. If not, we can tell it to do something else or we can just tell it to do nothing. Right now, let's just tell it to do nothing. So let's see how this works. I'm going to select my frame, shift and space, plus, 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 plus. Okay, moment of truth, 250. Clicking, clicking. Oh, okay. So it got to 260. So we need to rethink this. But it worked, yeah? It stopped at 260. You wanted to stop at 250, it stopped at 260. But it worked, okay? And this is something that happens a lot with conditionals. You need to kind of think of the logic the way the computer would think of the logic. So we obviously thought wrong. So because, ah, I know why. Because we told it to do it if it was smaller or equal to. So when it was 250, it still went up by 10 user error. So we need it to be when if count is smaller, less than 250. And that's it. Once it reaches 250, we don't want nothing to happen. Let's play it again and test. Bah, 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 bah. Yay, nothing happened. See, I'm still clicking on it and nothing is happening. So that is how conditionals work as well. We'll use them again when we're looking at string variables. So let's move on to that. Now, string variable, a string is just text. It's just a fancy coding way of saying text. So for the string variable, we're gonna do a little like spell test and we're going to ask the user to spell whatever this is. So it's a cat um, and cat is spelled C-A-T. So let's do it. In order to do that, we need to firstly create a string variable. So go into local variables, click on plus string and we'll call it input text, great. Now, the value right now, I want it to be completely empty, so I'm just going to click on space or leave it blank, whatever. Now, there is a text box in here. If you go to the layers panel, you'll be able to select it because it's nothing's in it. Um, so once I select that, again, at the top, apply variable, input text. So nothing's going to show right now, but that's fine. Now, let's start making these buttons add letters into my input field. Go into prototype add an interaction on click then the action is set variable input text and then same like we did with the count it's going to be input text plus and then we need to put in the letter now you need to put in the letter in quotation marks so i'm going to put p ta -da. yeah and then we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the letters now you can copy this prototype in order you so you don't have to do it again and again so i'll click on my uh this little handle for the prototype 
Command C to copy. Then I'll select the rest of my keys and Command V to paste. I'll just need to go in and change it obviously because each one needs to put in a different letter. So I'll just do that. Great, now let's see this in action. Select my string frame, shift and space. Then I'll click on C, I click on A, I click on T, I click on P, E, C, ha, 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 ha. Yay, it works, right? But it's a bit weird because I can click on all of them and it's not gonna tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. So let's use that check to sort of submit and tell us if we're right or if we're wrong. Yeah, let's do that. I think we should assign this rectangle to a color variable and have it change if it's right or if it's wrong. So if it's correct, it's going to be green. If it's wrong, it's going to be red. So let's go into local variables, add in a new color variable. I'll call it input, um, input check. Let's do that. And then right now, the color of it, I think, is this one. So yeah, let's just leave it at that. Select my rectangle, four squares, and assign that. Good, we've done that before, easy peasy. Now, when the user clicks on check, we want to check if the word is correct or not. And we'll do that using conditionals. So in the prototyping panel, we'll add an interaction, on click, conditional. If input text equals to, and then we need to do this in quotation marks, cat, then I want it to, to set the variable input check to green else if it's not cat i wanted to change it to something else so set set input check to and then let's make it a red yeah okay let's see if that worked so i'll select my frame shift and space to open it up let's start with just writing cat check oh it says it's wrong why is it wrong oh do you know why it's wrong because we had that space. Let's change that. So I'll just put a space before that and it should work now. So click on the frame, shift and space. Let's write cat. Yay, it worked, okay. Let's check it again with something that isn't correct. So I'm gonna click on R just to restart and let's just write pet instead. Wrong, uh -uh. cool. Now let's add a little delete button so we can just restart the process. I have one just hidden over here in the layers panel so you can open that up. And then I'll select it and add an interaction. And that interaction is going to be when someone clicks on it, set variable input text to, and then in brackets, I'm just gonna put in a space. So it resets the whole thing. Let's try that, shift and space. Let's just write loads of letters and then click on that and it deletes it. Let's just make sure that cat is still okay. Yes. One more thing that we do need to do is we also probably want to reset the color. So when you click on this, I'm going to add another action, set variable, input check, and then just leave it at the color that it is now. So let's see that in action. I'm writing cat, check, click on that, resets the whole thing. Let's now write something bad. Not good. There you go. Let's move on to Boolean. So our last variable is Boolean. Now Boolean controls the visibility of a layer. So it controls if it's gonna hide it or if it's gonna show it. Let's make three Boolean variables for each one of these lovely pandas. So I'll click on local variables, create Boolean variable, and I'll call it red panda. Now in order to create the same kind of variable again, I don't need to click on this plus. What I can do is just shift and enter and it will create a new one. This is gonna be yellow panda. And then another one is blue panda. You see that right now they're all set to false. I wanna set them all to true. Let's assign them and then I'll explain why. I'll select this image of our panda here and then I want to apply the variable to it. Now, in order to apply a Boolean variable, you need to right click on the eye where the appearance is. It's so weird, but that's the way to get to it, okay? You won't see that diamond shape that you're looking for in other cases. Right click on the eye. Assign that to red panda. Let's do this for yellow as well. Right click, right click, blue panda, boom. Now, seemingly nothing happened. But what we want to do is this button is going to control that Boolean. So I'll go into prototype, add an interaction, on click, and then set variable, just like we did before, red panda to false. Okay, so let's just do that with a red run for now. I'm gonna run this, click on that, 
is gone, yeah? But if I wanna bring it back, I can't. So we're gonna use, you guessed it, a conditional. So let's go in and change this a little bit. I wanna add a conditional and say, if red panda equals to true, then I wanna change set variable red panda to false. Else, so if it was actually false, I need to set it to true. So set variable red panda to true. Okay, so if you just look through this, yeah? So if red panda is true, I'm gonna set red panda to false. Else, meaning if it's not true, it's actually false, I'm gonna set red panda to true. I can also delete that first one that we had. So let's see if that worked. Clicking, clicking. Yeah? <laughs> now let's copy it for the others as well. You can select the interaction, Command C, click on the other two rectangles over here, and then Command V. And then I can change that to, instead of red panda, it just needs to be yellow panda. This needs to be yellow panda. This needs to be yellow panda. And same for the blue one as well. You just need to go in and change them to the correct variable. Great, and then once it's all set up, I can play this and just toggle between them. <laughs> cool, right? And that was that, a super quick intro of how you can use variables to prototype and make really meaningful prototypes in Figma. I hope you enjoyed, leave a comment below, let me know what else you wanna see. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.